Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. I am thrilled. Two of our favorite middle grade authors are here. Those are books that are great for that fourth grade reader up to that seventh grade reader. It's Tracy Holzer and Trisha Springstuff. Tracy, welcome to Naperville and to Anderson. Thank you. It is so exciting to have you here. Your book, The Secret Hum of a Daisy, has been one of our favorites ever since it came out. We put it on our mock Newbery list, and it was, it was just an absolute sort of heartfelt favorite for many of us when it, when it came out. It was, so, it was so easy to book talk this book because it has such heart in it. Because uh -huh. it's one of those books that certain parts will make you laugh, but it will make you cry, but you'll feel really good no matter which way you go on it. So we, I just want to thank you for writing this book because we have absolutely adored it. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. So what I want to know is where the seed started to grow for this world, well for a daisy, but the secret home of a daisy. Well, I actually wrote a short story. Um, I had this, this sort of incident when I was a kid uh, where I, um, my parents had just been recently divorced and my grandmother was getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff and I found the statue and I asked her if I could keep it instead of have it get thrown out. Mm -hmm. So I had the mm -hmm. statue with me for a long time, for about two years, and I just slowly over time started to believe that it was magic and it was looking oh. out for me and it was like my guardian angel. Yeah, yeah. And so I took it to school one day for show and tell and kind of got into a little bit of something with another girl who mm -hmm. was asking about what I'd brought and um, I said, well, it is special because it's magic. And she said, prove it. And so I took it and I threw it down as hard as I could on the ground and it just shattered into a million oh. pieces. And so I sat right. down to write a short story to try and capture kind of yeah, that moment right. of, it was such a tragedy for me at right. eight, you know, oh, yeah. that this thing I'd believed in. And so I thought, I'm alone now. I don't have any anything yeah. anymore. You know, mm -hmm. it was just a really tragic thing. So mm -hmm. I wanted to capture that in a story. Yeah. And this one came out instead. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like it's. But in it, a way, the, you can. The I can, kernel yeah. of that loss, I think, is what drove me to write a story about loss. Yeah. And this book got such great reviews, you know, and, and you were on Indie uh, New Voices New Voice, Choice, yeah. which is great. So that says That's so much really about neat. what we do as independent booksellers. Mm -hmm. We thought of, of a debut author, this book really had to be held up um, in, as a just a wonderful book that we needed to get into a lot of readers' hands. So. Yeah, and I'm so grateful. Yeah, I know. So, 12-year-old Grace, yes. so I'm, she's part you, part right? Uh -huh. Is she a composite of anyone else, or is it a lot of you that you put into her character? Uh, I think it's a lot of me. She, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of me. She, yeah. she the, the frustrated writer, the um, trying to deal with emotions that are bigger than she is as a child, yeah. you know, and trying to figure out where she is and all of that in the middle yeah. of it all. Yeah. Yeah. So, and very alone. I, I was an only child and um, my parents, or my mother remarried into a very huge family so that didn't last a whole long time, but for that time, that short period of time, I just felt so alone and I feel like that's how she feels too right, right. until she steps into a bigger community. Yeah. Of, yeah. People that love her. Well, and she and Grace and her mom have moved around. They never stay in one place very long yeah. until they find one place, but her mother says they have to leave. So right. this book to me was, was sort of that book of, it's, there's a lot of regret, but there's also words said that you can't take back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th those things that you so wish you could, because without spoilers, you know, we yeah. I don't want to tell too much of the story, but we... Right. But she loses her mother, yeah. and how tragic it is for her because she felt her last words to her were words in anger, I you know, yeah. about all that. So there's a lot of regret, and then she has to, she goes to another to live with a grandmother that she's never met before. Mm -hmm. And you find out that there was a relationship problem that her mother had with her grandmother. Right. And, um, but I just found, I found it very believable, the grandmother and the relationship with what it builds. And, so the way you write is so poetic, and you, there's Thank a lot you. of poetry in this Thank book, you. and I, I think you're probably a Robert Frost fan, I'm assuming. Big right? time. <laughs> Big time Robert Frost. <laughs> yes. Well, and the poem you even mentioned where Grace gets her names, name, that, yeah. I always just felt yeah. like Robert Frost was so accessible. Yeah. That even me, yeah. even I could understand Robert yeah. Frost when I was growing up. Right. You know? But, you know, it's, it's, it's such a book about long, but finding, finding home, finding a place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah and I, I don't know, how, was it hard to craft? because it was so beautiful to read. This was not a book I wanted to skim through. I wanted to read every word. 
and, and linger over it because it was so beautiful the way you wrote it. So Thank I just want to so know much. how much poetry has played in your life and, and how it influences your writing. You know, it's interesting because poetry, I always felt like uh, it was too smart. It was too smart for me. <laughs> I was not a very good student. Um, I didn't do very well in my English classes and things like that. Yeah. Um, I, I felt, I feel like I couldn't really um, write within the parameters that they wanted me to write in. Yeah. But Robert Frost, there were a few poets who um, were so accessible to me and I completely understood for some reason. Yeah. And then once I got a hold of, I think it was Steinbeck, that was when I read Of Mice and Men in high right. school. Mm -hmm. And then I went on a Steinbeck kick, you know, yeah. and read all of Steinbeck. Sure. And I feel like he's very poetic too. I feel like there's a whole lot of very poetic writers that don't necessarily write poetry, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, um, that's true. But the interesting thing is my agent, when I had sent it in to her originally, it didn't have any of the poetry in it, and she wasn't any kind of a writer, really, yeah. uh, a little bit. Yeah. And she said, you know, give your give give it a try. See if you can yeah. write some poetry um, for Grace to sort of um, maybe be the connection between right. her and her dad, you know? And I was like, that's brilliant! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so I went with it and um, absolutely just tried to hope that I could write some poetry that would be and, well no and then you see where Grace starts off with just a couple of lines mm -hmm. but then at the end of the book which is the part if I even talk about it, I'll start to cry <laughs> I will I will really I start cried to cry. while I wrote that no too. and yeah. I know and it's yeah. at the end it's the poem she gives to her grandma I can't see I'm sorry to tear I know, up I even, see even see, I'm sorry I can't. it's so it's so beautiful that poem at the end but um okay we'll change subject so I don't start to it cry. was really hard to write yeah. too I have no, to say no it was beautiful and um but there's a, something that, that Grace had with her mother, and it had to do with paper cranes. So mm -hmm. tell us about the cranes in the book, and the special one she finds in a bush when she when she comes out of school one day in this new place where she's living. Yeah. yeah. Um, she The first crane she finds is what she thinks is the first clue in the treasure hunt, you know, because her mom used to send her on these treasure yeah, hunts to try right. and familiarize herself with new places. And so she finds this crane in the bush outside school and, and she feels certain that her mom is sending her a sign, trying to lead her to a better home, you right, know, instead right. of this horrible grandmother. Um, I guess I don't want to give that away though. Yeah. But the, 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 right. the crane is, you know, sort of plays along throughout. The, the cranes sure. keep coming back yeah. and keep coming back as more right. as a sign. But there's yeah. mystery too, I think, around yeah. where they're coming right. from. Right. And we don't want to give away the... No. Uh, the but the book's been out for a little over a year now, mm -hmm. right? So what, what have you been hearing from readers? And are you hearing from readers who can totally relate to Grace and what she's been through and, you know, being an only child, having to move around a lot, losing her mother, you know, all these things like that? Yes, I've heard, I've, got, I've gotten some uh, letters and things from kids. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the, the kids that respond are a little older. They're a little, uh, a little on the older side, okay. maybe middle school versus sure. the elementary right. level. But I've also stumbled onto a few things on the internet, you know. Mm -hmm. um, as writers, we Google ourselves sometimes to see if we can get some feedback. It's terrible, but no, we do. We can't no, help no, it. No, no, no. It's, um, it's okay. <laughs> I, I've found a couple of very, very meaningful posts that people did. In fact, one of them was, there's, I guess, a site where um, you write to your future self. Oh, right, right. And so she wrote a letter about reminding herself of of um, some really hard times that she had and then okay. and then also reminded herself to remember the secret hum of a daisy oh, and yeah. so that one to me so far has been the most meaningful and then I also had a um, interaction with kids you know when I go to school uh, there's a particular school where all my kids went through and okay. one of the teachers yeah. I'm very close with her so every year I read she reads the book to her kids and then I come in and talk to them right. and one child this year had lost her mom oh, um, yeah. a couple years ago and so she just came up and very matter-of-factly, you know, let me know how important the book was to her and how it helped her make some decisions about, helped her make some decisions about her new mom mm -hmm. and, and um, maybe giving her a chance. And, yeah. you know, you kind of don't know what to say in the moment because yeah. you really want to just hold them and, and put them in your arms and tell yeah. them it's going to be okay. But, um, so you settle for like signing their arm, sure. and, you yeah. know, <laughs> right, which is good. That's great. That they're just yeah, brilliant, yeah. and a lot of times adults don't even figure that out, you know. Right. So they're way ahead of the game. But, it, but it make, I mean, for an author, you've got then just that one reader has. It was so worth what I've done, you know. Yes, that's really yes. that really can that's make absolutely. what a difference it can make. And, and this book, you know, it did have the balance of 
the heart and the emotion and um, the tears in this book, but also the fun parts in this mm -hmm. book, because there yeah. are those in this book. There truly are. I find that that balance sometimes can be way out of whack in a book that's not good, but you really balanced it well. Is that something you, you had to craft for a long time? That part um, felt like rhythm to me, okay. so it wasn't okay. quite as difficult as many of the other parts were, yeah. like plot. That was very hard for me. But yeah. the, the rhythm of it and the balance, because I get sick of hearing myself talk, okay. <laughs> so if yeah, I'm going no, on and good. on with the sad stuff, everyone, you know, I'll stop and think, this needs some levity, you know, and, um, and so then, but also it seemed to just kind of happen right. within the scene, too, yeah. the, with the characters. And, and so the supporting characters in the book, from, mm -hmm. from Grandma to Mrs. Green, all, they were really fleshed out. Whereas in, you read some middle mm -hmm. grade novels where some of the those those extras in it don't yeah. get any attention at all. But you really, this character cares. And also the town. This town yeah, yeah. is a character in the book, which was so wonderful, too. It's yeah. based on my hometown. Oh, is it? So, okay. Yeah. I moved up to Grass Valley, California, when I was 14. And it just changed my life because it was... We'd moved from the city to this place is up in the Sierra Nevadas, and it's just beautiful. And oh, wow. I felt so connected to nature that I just sort of felt that mm -hmm. whatever artistic part of me that there is sort of opened it, finally opened its eyes yeah. and, and right. started thinking about books and writing and things. So, so you, you mentioned a little bit about you know putting putting the story together. So did you set out to do an outline, or is it, or you know? So you wrote it and let it sort of surprise you and take you where, it's, where it does us as the readers when we're yes. reading the book. Yeah. And then a lot of times I do, I have gotten some comments on the characters about how fleshed out they are and I feel like that's because I hit so many dead ends that I felt were because of the characters and I didn't know them well enough mm -hmm. that I would do all of these biographies and character sketches and I would do first person narratives in their voice so I would get all this information about who they were and then oh, I would come back and think, what does that have to do with my story? But you know, but if that, you just take one yeah. word from a history, it can open up sort of a um, right. a hallway, you know, into their the past. Yeah. And, and so, well, it's interesting I do like you, that about my characters. Yeah, thing. but you did. That's very interesting. You did that because that does it informs what you write about them that ends up in the book. So it that does. does. Yeah, it does. Right. So I've done the same thing in my second book. I did a whole okay. lot of again more character development and. So it's like a whole another big set of characters again, a big oh, yeah. cast of, yeah. yeah. So what are you working on now, since you just That's, mentioned that? So I tell us a little bit about it that. Um, it's, it's untitled, I'm calling it The Lucy Adventures, but it's about a uh, 12-year-old um, Italian-American girl, and sh her, her one side of her family is all Italian, and, um, and she's very scientific minded and her father has gone to Vietnam as a surgeon and he's just come home with some PTSD and um, is very different in his interactions with her. He mm -hmm. was always the one to really uh, encourage her science and her thinking and, um, and she's really trying to balance the scientific side of her thinking mm -hmm. with the heart of her family and there's this blessing that she's waiting for to get from her big nonna on her 13th birthday and she's kind of thinking it's dumb and sort of as the story progresses through a summer romance with a boy that is new in the area um, it's kind of a first love story yeah, I guess right, yeah. but at the same time she's trying to put the pieces of her father together she feels responsible to kind of help him mm -hmm. remember who he is and who he is in their family right. Um, so it's kind of a mystery as to what happened to him over there oh, okay. that we uncover through letters that he wrote to her. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. So when? When uh, do we? 17, but I'm not sure okay. exactly when. All right. okay. I'm waiting for some feedback. Okay. All right. From my editor. So it should be, um, I'm thinking spring, I'm hopeful spring okay. of 2017. Okay. Wonderful. We can't wait. Yeah. Thank you so much for sitting down Thank and talking with so me. Thank you so much for having us here. I'm oh, so and, excited to be no, here. And Tracy, please come back for the next book and Absolutely. The, the title, Lucy Story, you're calling it right um, now, but please come back and see us for that book. I, definitely. What a heartfelt conversation with author Tracy Holzer about her book, The Secret Hum of a Daisy. We'll be back with author Tricia Springstone.